so uh, uh, basically uh, we know that short stature is one of the most common uh, problem that presents to pediatric endocrine clinic and the etiology of short stature can range from very benign conditions uh, like physiological conditions to extremely serious or critical conditions like a brain tumor so uh, short stature uh, for us medical practitioners should also be seen uh, as a symptom of a disease not just a uh, not just a disease per se so whenever we are evaluating uh, the uh, the questions that come to my mind when i am seeing a child with short stature is that first of all is the child really short has it simply been uh, brought to you out of concern of parents out of comparison with someone else is the child really short or not second is is there growth failure and as we go along the talk we will discuss uh, between difference between the short stature and growth failure and what is the etiology uh, of short stature now here uh, you will be largely guided or helped by clinical pointers and growth chart these are the essential tools in management of uh, or evaluating children with short stature and these two would guide us to uh, appropriate laboratory evaluation and uh, then after you make a diagnosis obviously uh, you would proceed with the treatment that will not be covered as a part of this talk so coming to the first question that is the child short now how do we decide this by firstly uh, accurately measuring height although it sounds very simple and stupid uh, to kind of say that the short stature uh, assessment uh, starts with a measurement of height but even now we get referrals or calls where uh, the pediatricians say that such and such child is short these are the investigations these are the results tell us what do we do nowadays with the whatsapp groups you get all these kind of summaries and when we ask them have you plotted a growth chart have you taken the height weight they have no clue or uh, they haven't really plotted the growth chart so uh, and so many of the pediatric clinics that i see still do not have adequate facility of accurate measurement of height so you need a device which is accurate not necessarily costly device but accurate correctly installed device and uh, for children below 2 years of age or children who are not able to stand straight you would measure length it is important to remember that length cannot be assessed by a single person you have you need two people to make sure that the head of the child is stable and firmly like stuck to the head plate of the infantometer and the leg play, legs are in the correct position so you cannot measure one single person cannot measure uh, length you need two observers for that as the child is standing we make sure that the frame of the stadiometer is exactly perpendicular to the ground often the walls have a uh, kind of curve and that kind of uh, can uh, uh, cause minor errors and these minor errors can be significant with respect to evaluation of short stature in uh, even error of 4 5 mm can change the diagnosis or can change the assessment of response to therapy we make sure that the footwear is removed and uh, the heels buttocks shoulders and occiput are touching the uh, wall or touching the uh, vertical surface and the skull is in the frankfurt plane for this we have to make sure by putting a chin uh, putting a hand under the chin so that the child is not looking down or not looking up like this that can cause measurement errors in height these are the common sources of errors and then not just measuring but plotting height is also important you cannot just uh, look at tables or you cannot just uh, say uh, use some sort of a formula that is given in nelson to say that this should be the height and because it is not that much the child is short you have to plot growth chart you can do it manually you can do it digitally you can use a iap app you can do whatever way you want it i still prefer a uh, good old uh, paper and pencil to plot growth chart and uh, you plot the height and weight as a tiny dot not as a big target mark or uh, something overlapping few months on the growth chart you just plot it as a tiny dot on the extreme right side that is the adult or 18 or 20 whatever line the growth chart is ending at you plot the mid target mid parental height we will come across the formula for mid parental height in the subsequent slide and you above more above and below that you plot the mid parental target range then from the weight and height you can Uh, kind of correlate the weight and height or direct the weight and height to the 50th centile to see what is the height age 
which means the high current height of the child corresponds to average of what age with respect to the indian standards similarly you can calculate weight age you can plot bone ages as triangles on cross on the growth chart also and this gives nice differential diagnosis for uh, evaluation of short stature uh, it i mean it is not necessary as i said that the equipment has to be a harpenden uh, stadiometer which is available to very few institutes in india uh, i have been one lucky to have it in my training as well as in my practice but uh, it is fair enough i mean but what we commonly see is what must not be used is these papers which are installed on the walls they are notoriously inaccurate i have never seen a reading which has come from these as accurate uh, reading also the device is correct but the installation has not been taken care of so uh, for example in this you can see that the installation is uh, is not correct so you can use these cheaper uh, country made devices also but make sure that the installation is correct so the these typically have 0 to 200 cm range of height and when you draw the uh, stadiometer completely to the ground the marker of the stadiometer should correspond to 0 so uh, this we have to make sure that the installation is correct now which children need workup typically height which is below two standard deviation that is roughly corresponding to third centile for the age sex and ethnicity which means that we should plot the growth on indian growth charts not indian children on international growth charts or if the height is significantly below mid parental target range which is calculated by this formula it is available in all standard textbooks you could refer to that the 13 refers to the adult male female height difference that's why we for a boy we add 13 to mother side and for a girl we subtract 13s from father's height and uh, in indian growth charts the standard deviation of uh, height like uh, the heights comes to about 6 6 and 1/2 cm i prefer to use one standard deviation above and below the mid parental range because for somebody who is on the lower side the two standard deviation that is 12 cm may come to be the normal and may actually miss out on the pathological conditions the purpose of evaluation is to pick up pathological conditions of uh, causing short stature or if you have height which is in the normal range but there is evidence of growth deceleration across two major centriles these children also need these children must have a good workup done if you have disproportion or dysmorphism which which is suggestive of syndromic short stature or uh, in some cases the evaluation may even be anticipatory for example nowadays lot of brain tumor survivors receiving lot of uh, like receiving significant amount of cranial irradiation or children with leukemia who have had cranial irradiation they need anticipatory evaluation and sometimes they could have combination of problems like growth hormone deficiency along with precocious puberty which can make the evaluation a bit complex coming to the second question of is there a growth failure to address this question all of us should be aware about growth velocity which basically means the difference in height measured over two time points divided by the number of months between those two time time points for example if i measure the height in january and july over a period of 6 months the height that the child has gained let us say that the child has gained 3 cm of height in 6 months so 3 divided by 6 that is 0.5 into 12 that is 6 6 cm per year will be the growth velocity of this particular child so there are normal values in textbooks as well as in uh, several publications which can refer to the normal values of growth velocity but it is important to remember that grow children do not grow uniformly so it is not necessary that in every 3 months the child has to gain 1 or 2 cm so i mean uh, the for correct interpretation of growth velocity you need to observe the child for 6 to 12 months for younger children i would prefer to see them for nearly 6 to 12 at least like a year before i comment about what is the growth velocity sometimes children coming late or those who are in puberty the the window of opportunity or window of observation may need to be tailored uh, towards a little shorter side still a 6 month observation is required for most cases what is the importance of growth velocity so for example in this particular growth chart you can see that this child is short but the child has normal growth velocity so this is a example of short child with normal growth velocity which goes with uh physiological conditions like familial short stature or constitutional delay of growth and puberty whereas in this growth chart if you see a single reading the child appears to be in the normal range but if you plot previous readings you can see that there has been a growth deceleration 
so this is growth failure uh, and the child with growth failure has to be uh, evaluated because growth failure is invariably likely to be pathological short stature may or may not be pathological particularly if the child is just below the normal in most of the situations the diagnosis is physiological conditions like familial short stature or constitutional delay of growth and puberty there are some situations where there can be a so called physiological uh, growth faltering uh typically in the first two years the child at birth the size depends on maternal nutrition and several other factors and the child tends to track towards the genetic potential in the first two years or if we are changing from length measurement to height measurement uh there can be a small difference because length uh because of the effect of gravity the height will be a little small uh, amount less than the length measurement so therefore there can be a uh, apparent uh lack of uh, you know uh, adequate growth velocity when we are changing from length growth charts to height growth charts also uh, in this growth chart you can see that there is this slight uh, so apparent growth failure followed by a normal growth this is a pre pubertal dip so just like uh, starting slow and then uh, running fast i mean uh, just a step back before you run fast pre pubertal dip of uh, growth uh, velocity is common and uh, that also needs to be kept in mind what is the cause of short stature to address uh, to think about causes of short stature you need to know what all things we need for growing normally so we need genes we need a uh, large uh, largely about 80% of our height is determined by our genes so uh, the parents height parents pubertal pattern etc is very important and uh some uh several genes affecting the growth hormone axis where are also and also the other uh, genes which are involved in cartilage uh, function or bone formation etc are also important in terms of uh, stature development you need healthy bones you need adequate food and the food needs to be absorbed properly and uh, this lack of adequate food actually even in utero can cause long term consequences like adulthood short stature for children who are born sga you need to be healthy which means you need to be disease free so systemic diseases can cause short stature uh, and you need to have uh, hormones at several at various stages different different hormones are important thyroid hormone throughout your childhood growth hormone also but predominantly growth hormone affects the childhood uh, growth and during puberty the sex steroid and augmentation of growth hormone secretion by the sex steroid is uh, results into the pubertal growth spurt and you need a uh, loving and caring atmosphere so if you have significant family discord or uh, 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 several psychosocial problems in the family that could also lead to a uh, short stature typically uh, many systemic diseases would have their own symptoms and signs but there are certain conditions which can just present as short stature this include celiac disease renal tubular acidosis chronic kidney disease or inflammatory bowel disease and very rarely even poorly controlled asthma without any so called obvious history of uh, being asthmatic common endocrine conditions not just growth hormone deficiency but also other conditions like hypothyroidism more common than growth hormone deficiency uh, cushing syndrome rare but important condition to be kept in mind and poorly controlled diabetes can cause short stature and after we uh, have ruled out all these conditions and we have still not been able to figure out what is the cause of short stature then we label them as idiopathic short stature work up like any other condition history and clinical examination is most important uh, many of you are all aware about the detailed history that we must take but there are some things which we often tend to forget which which are important with respect to history of short stature uh we must ask about what was the birth rate many of the children are born sga and uh, a large uh, about 10 to 15% of them may not uh, may end up ad as adult uh, short stature they may not catch up also the pattern of pubertal growth in family that is very important and often missed uh, in uh, in history taking you will obviously be inquiring for uh, several systemic diseases uh, nutrition etc in terms of examination accurate anthropometry plotting the growth chart looking from head to toe uh, for signs or clues which are suggestive of causes of short stature 
we'll go through some de- uh, details all pediatricians should now be uh, as they deal with adolescents now uh, should have an orchidometer in their clinic and should be having a chart which is uh, teaching them about tanner staging so that they can assess the tanner staging of uh, adolescents so uh, as i said that plotting the growth chart is extremely important in this growth chart on your left side you can see that this girl is significantly short and uh, her weight is not that much affected so her height age is actually just 3 3 and a half and her weight age is about 7 or so in this sort of a situation a uh, endocrine cause or a syndromic cause is more uh, likely so this particular girl had hypothyroidism which has se- severe amount of uh, growth delay uh, and bonage uh, delay also in whereas on the chart in the chart on the right side you can see that this child has come with short stature but if we look at the uh, if we look at the sorry if we look at the weight readings you can see that there has been significant faltering of weight gain from many many years this child was being managed as chronic malaria or kala azar because he belonged to that particular belt of india however after present initial presentation as short stature nearly 2 to 2 and 1/2 years later he developed significant joint symptoms and he had actually juvenile idiopathic arthritis so where weight is affected before the height the chance that it is malabsorption or a systemic condition or a psychological uh, cause like anorexia nervosa in girls etc that is more uh, likely if weight is more affected or more severely affected than the height so in this particular case it was juvenile idiopathic arthritis so this slide also tells us the importance of measurement of weight and assessment of weight in the differential diagnosis of short stature so it's not just the height i mean there can be several clues on on clinical examination just to give example of a uh, few examples this is a girl which is after making after asking her to make a fist and seeing the knuckles you can see this dimple at the fourth metacarpal which is suggestive of a short fourth metacarpal which is most commonly seen in turner syndrome this girl with short fourth and fifth metacarpal had pseudo hypoparathyroidism another condition which can have brachymetacarpia this boy uh, uh, this was my uh, patient in sgpj actually uh, he's 3 year old but looking like a small infant with frontal bossing with bluish tinge of sclera depressed nasal bridge and mid facial hypoplasia has growth hormone deficiency whereas this boy uh, has puffy cheeks and uh, uh, weight gain with poor height gain suggestive of cushing syndrome looking uh, it is important to strip the child completely uh and some of the clues are apparent like for example in this case the lordosis that exaggerated lordosis that you see is apparent only after you kind of strip and observe the child properly so this child had spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia whereas the child on this side uh, had severe rickets type 1 vitamin d dependent rickets causing short stature how do we decide on the test required if you have child which is totally normal on growth and uh, on history and examination and height is normal for population the child can be reassured and followed up after 6 months to document the growth velocity if the child is short and the cause is obvious on history and examination you do only that specific test to confirm the cause whereas for most of our children who come to us short child with no obvious cause on history and examination we do a set of tests called as screening investigations as i have said earlier all children with growth failure or growth deceleration need to be investigated right at their first visit a common mistake in ordering bone age is just to write for wrist x ray we should write for the entire hand or hand plus wrist x ray uh, uh, and interpret the x ray with the help of bone age atlas not going by vague radi- radiological reports of 9 to 12 years or 5 to 13 years etc this is the list of tests that we commonly do Uh, in terms of deciding on igf1 or igf bp3 it you can take uh, individual case to case based uh, decisions they are costly tests uh, so please think carefully before ordering these tests celiac screening it can be done as a screening test in northern or central india but for south, western or southern india it can be reserved as a second line test so you can kind of modify it based on your scenario 
and if we don't identify any further any cause of uh, on these tests and if the child is just borderline short the child can be observed for 6 to 12 months for documenting growth velocity and if the child is significantly short or has had a significantly low growth velocity then there is uh, there are several second line tests but please remember that not everything is to be done for everyone we have to take our clinical parameters to decide which all tests are important particularly karyotype is important in and girls with an explained short stature uh, testing for renal tubular acidosis and in today's day uh, before uh, like uh, children with severe short stature particularly height below 3 standard deviation even we need to consider genetic testing <coughs> just last couple of slides i'll finish just few case scenarios to address common problems that we face in opd so this is a 11 year old boy with mother worried about short stature and the boy feels very bad that the girls of his class are taller than him and clinical examination history otherwise everything is un unremarkable this child is uh, if you plot the chart and you see as per the mid parental height the child is totally normal so all this child needs is maybe some reassurance if i have some previous readings which also shows that the child was always on that line that helps otherwise we could observe for 6 months but all this child needs is just talking in terms of uh, the difference of puberty of girls and boys and why the girls are taller than uh, the boy uh, than the boys of his class uh, and doesn't need a lot of tests or a lot of vitamins or hanging or stretching or all sorts of maneuvers that people do to make their children tall another common scenario and very important one a 12 and a half year old girl was referred uh, or came rather with short stature and uh, has had menses nearly 2 and a half year ago and now the height is not increasing now at this stage it is very uh, unlikely that any of the intervention of growth hormone etc is going to help so these kind of delayed referrals are very common and it is important to recognize that sga or any condition which can cause short stature is best managed if it is diagnosed early uh as i said about familial short stature that the child is appropriate for family but if one or both parents are very short then we need to think of pathological conditions and we need to evaluate these children and this is a growth chart Uh, where the child shows evidence of growth failure a significant bone age delay a low igf1 and this is the scenario where a growth hormone deficiency would be suspected and confirmed with the help of a growth hormone stimulation test we do growth hormone stimulation test for most most of these children except for few where there is uh, overwhelming evidence clinically as well as neuroimaging wise and a low igf1 in those uh, as per the 2016 guidelines or consensus guidelines sometimes we may skip but for most children we do continue to do stimulation tests these have these are specialized tests they cannot be done by anybody so they have to be done at reliable centers and they have to be done by people who are experienced and used to doing these tests some of these tests like insulin test can even be dangerous so therefore do not do uh, these tests just at a, as a general practitioner or pediatrician these these have to be done at specialized centers so i would just end up by uh, saying that measure height not just weight uh, this is the problem for most children that we see in our opds and plot the height longitudinally on the same growth chart not that the child is coming with five growth charts with 111 uh, height plotted on each of them weight measurement is important for differential diagnosis of short stature get used to assess assessing puberty by tanner staging keep an orchidometer uh, with you for uh, estimation of testicular volume and the workup has to be guided by clinical findings don't just order a battery of tests for anybody who walks in your opd with short stature and before ordering specialized tests like karyotype or uh, uh, these growth hormone tests or igf1 etc keep endocrinologist or pediatric endocrinologist in loop thank you so much and I